Well, Beyond the Mask is a film that's set in the time just before the Revolutionary War. There is a, a lot of, there, there is a political element. There's a lot of intrigue. You look at the interplay between the East India Company and the colonies. You guys obviously took history in your homeschool. That's right. And so we love um, the historical fiction and weaving in some of those characters from the past. And I mean, as you look back at um, history, uh, really, I say that you have to look back to know where you are today and to be able to look forward. And so as as you're um, we're all part of the story, the great story, you know, his story. And so as, as we look to, to create movies and tell stories that impact culture, we love going back and looking at, at history to, for some of those settings. And one thing I love about uh, a movie that is set in a different time and place than where, where we are today, it allows us to have conversations about issues and themes um, in, in really direct ways, but in, in ways that don't feel as confrontational. So if you, you know, and, and go into a modern church or you start talking uh, using modern Christianese lingo, people say, oh, you know, I'm not interested in that. And they might back away. But if, if you have a conversation with a guy who's, um, you know, using the, the context of a different place mm-hmm. far away, people watch and they enjoy it. And then they start to realize, you know what, human hearts haven't changed. And, and, and we are all the same from, you know, 200 years ago to today. And it allows us to really engage in some of those spiritual themes and discussion in, in a way that's different, in a way that's fun and, and helps you, um, draws you into that story rather than pushing you away right at the beginning. Well, something that's very interesting, you set this film in a historical time period. Obviously, it is a work of fiction, Mm -hmm. but there are, and what is very cool at the end of the movie, you actually talk about, or you you post some summaries of events that actually Actually took place that could relate in a way to some of the fictitious material that people see in the film. Yeah, so Bob, we really worked hard to couple this with real history. So it's a story that, that we like to say could have happened. So a couple of quick examples. John Dickinson, who's one of the founding fathers of America, he penned a pamphlet in this time period opining about the very threat of East India Company meddling in the American colonies. Mm-hmm. Boston, Massachusetts, colonists throw tea in the harbor. That's East India Company tea. They're doing it to spite their king, but that's East India Company tea. Is a trade monopoly here? You look at George Washington, there was an assassination plot against Washington that involved bombs. Uh, it was just a few months before the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Ben Franklin is well known for his key and kite uh, electricity experiments. He also coined the word battery. He actually built an electrostatic generator just like the one that he demonstrates in the movie. So this stuff is all, it's real history that we've tapped into and tied into. So it's very fun. We could go on about that. This is very cool. But, but let's do shift gears and talk about William Reynolds, the main character of this film, the, the man that is... I tell you, he's not just a man behind the mask. He's got a whole lot of masks that he's dealing with. We meet him at the beginning of the film as an assassin on behalf of the East India Company and their a dastardly leader, Charles Kemp, played by John Reese davies And then he goes through really a path to redemption, if you will. Talk about that, if you would. So when we look at, um, we look at this character, Will Reynolds, he's really like all of us. Now you say, hold on, I'm not an assassin. Well, okay, I'll admit, I'm not either. But all of us have things that we've done in the past, whether it's things that people did to us or whether it's mistakes that we've made or things that we wish we could change about who we are or what we've done. And so we all have a sense of brokenness inside. And so it's it's the natural tendency as humans to try to fix yourself and try to work hard and try to, to cover up that brokenness that we feel. And as and Chad and I, you know, have um, many experiences that we could share about those 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 real broken times, broken times and those real uh, heart challenges that we have. But you know, um, what we found is that the more you try to fix them, the more you try to cover up, the more masks you build for yourself, the more you realize that you really can't do it. And so that's Will's journey. As he first, he says, "Hey, he's going to hide." He's he, um, you know, as the movie opens up, uh, he leaves behind his life as an assassin he's thrown into the bus for the crimes committed by the company and he goes into hiding as his vicar and of course that's where he meets the beautiful girl and that's kind of where the film opens up but all of us know that um just lying about who we are that's not going to fix it so then as his his, he's exposed for the fraud that he is he launches on a much more interesting journey to fix himself and build a mask of his good works that he can pile on top and say hey I'm a good guy. Look at the good things that I've done. And that's where it really hits home for most of us that, you know, I'm a pretty good person. You know, I'm, I'm a decent dad. I'm a decent husband. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I, I can even go to church a lot. You know, I'm, I'm a Christian for crying out loud, but none of us can do 
enough good things to fix ourselves. And, and that's both the, both uh, the tragedy but also the hope because the hope of the gospel is that we don't have to, that Christ has already done those things for us, and we can find rest and hope through his work. And so that allows us then to live in freedom, the free from having to do those things, and then we can, can pursue the, the joyful relationship that we, that we have in Christ. So that's really the, the story of Beyond the Mass. It's the story of all of us and the story of redemption and hope that we can find. Chad, anything you would have to add as we close? Yeah, you know, I, I, great, great synopsis there, Aaron. And you see in the story Will Reynolds literally saving a kid from a burning building. It's a, it's a short scene, but it's like the quintessential thing we think of is what would I do that could possibly earn my own redemption? What could be better than saving a kid from a burning building? And uh, that is still not enough. And you can never, we cannot do enough to fix ourselves. And it's in Jesus' finished work that we find hope.